Spoilers for everything Better Call Saul. Trust me, you've been warned. HHM, better known as Hamlin Hamlin McGill, the prestigious law firm in Albuquerque, New Mexico, once on par with top law firms like Schweikert & Coakley or Davis & Main, and in this video I'm going to explain how the HHM reputation was destroyed and will never recover, and more than likely will be closing its doors by the end of the series. But before we get started, if you could leave a like on this video to show your support for the channel, and it also lets me know that I'm doing a good job, so yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. The year was 2002. Maybe, it's not really clear. But HHM was started by George Hamlin and Charles McGill and later came George's son, Howard, who was mentored by Chuck and was made partner, then CEO, officially becoming HHM. Now at the beginning of the show, we find out that Chuck's been on leave for about a year and a half due to him having this weird condition where he's basically allergic to electricity, or as he calls it. I have a condition. Charles, I have a hypersensitivity to electricity. And with him having this condition, his brother Jimmy is looking after him, bringing him everything from newspapers to food, basically being an unofficial caretaker and at the same time he's a lawyer so he also comes to check from legal advice from time to time and one day jimmy who's working elder law discovers that his clients are being overcharged at this nursing home sandpiper crossing trust me we'll get back to that later but him and chuck work together to build a case together and once that case is solid chuck decided to give the case over to hhm because they're a bigger law firm and chuck and jimmy is just chuck and jimmy but in exchange for giving up the case jimmy would get a finder's fee but ultimately he'll be cut out from the case um the case is all we want. He reluctantly takes a deal, but he finds out that Chuck, his own brother, and the person who inspired him to become a lawyer was actually the same person holding him back while he was working in the mailroom at HHM. Now, here's a quick sidebar. Jimmy McGill, better known as Slippin' Jimmy, a small time but good hearted con man who was arrested and facing some prison time for, how did he say it? Hey, but it was a simple Chicago sunroof. He defecated through a sunroof. So Jimmy called his brother Chuck and made a deal that if Chuck was able to help him out and get Jimmy out of trouble, Jimmy would make a change and do something good with his life. And in true Jimmy fashion, he became a lawyer just like his brother and he received his law degree from this shady law school called the University of American Samoa. And once Chuck found out that Jimmy wanted to be a lawyer at the HHM law firm, Chuck sent Howard to reject him for the job. So now you're caught up. But now that Jimmy knows the truth, he's a little salty about it, but he deals with it. And plus he's offered a position at Davis and Maine until he decides to air this very generic law firm commercial without permission. And he later gets fired or quit. I can't really remember. You're fired. What? What? No. But he starts a double law firm with his girlfriend, Kim, who later becomes his wife, who was also working in HHM, but has since resigned and took a high profile case with her, Mesa Verde. And when Howard and Chuck finds out, they decide to retaliate by taking the case from her. And when that happens, the domino effect of the fall of HHM officially begins. So HHM decided to actually take the Mesa Verde case with an impressive amount of ass kissing, like almost cringe level, but they did it and Jimmy decides to retaliate by doing this calculated move that involved him copying and forging Maid Severity documents ever so slightly. And just like that, HHM lost the case and their reputation was taking a hit as well. And when news gets out that Chuck may have a mental illness, Howard decides just to float the idea of retirement. But Chuck, he doesn't, so things continue. So things get a little more twisted when Chuck, who's seemingly playing the victim when Jimmy arrives at his house, and his house is just covered in these space blankets. Like, he made it look like a wallpaper, basically. But this was all Chuck's plan to basically get Jimmy to confess to forging the documents, and with his condition, he recorded the whole conversation and devised a plan that would make Jimmy break into his house, set up some witnesses, and ultimately try to get Jimmy disbarred. Oh no. Oh no. And then there was McGill, versus McGill. And at the hearing, Jimmy pulls out all the tricks, including bringing Chuck's ex-wife to the hearing to throw him off. And as a cherry on top, he hired Huel to place a phone battery in his pocket to disprove his whole electric allergy. And it works almost too well because Chuck has a meltdown on the stand that leads to one of my favorite scenes in the series. And he gets to be a lawyer? What a sick joke. I should have stopped him when I had the chance. And you, you have to stop him. You And I mean, how do you recover from that? And the answer is, you don't. And word of Chuck's episode traveled all the way up to the male practice insurer who was seeking to double Chuck's premiums due to Chuck's condition. 
and Howard, who's considering the HHM reputation at the time, decides to buy out Chuck using $3 million of his own money. $3 million. And all I can say is, you know how much you have to despise a person not to wait on a settlement check? That would be the equivalent of me, let's say, working for McDonald's, right? And instead of me putting in my two weeks notice to say, hey, I'm gonna quit, McDonald's says, hey, here's $3 million just to quit right now, just, just go. Chuck is applauded out of the door. A week goes by and he seems to have gotten better. In fact, he's improved so much that it's almost as if though it was all in his head. But things aren't good for too long when he wakes up in the middle of the night and with the strike of a match and the kick of a lantern, Chuck commits suicide by house fire. And as you could imagine, hearing news of a once prestige lawyer who's allergic to electricity that killed himself by setting his house on fire, that could attract some pretty negative attention. So Howard goes into overdrive, doing everything to repair his and HHM's credibility, doing things like opening a library in Chuck's name and even offering a Chuck scholarship, which is weird because would you accept the scholarship from a person who committed suicide by a house fire and you knew about this? I mean, I guess, but uh, it's not exactly sending the best message. So a year goes by and Howard sees Jimmy in the courthouse who's now going by Saul Goodman and he offers him a job at HHM and he goes on about how Saul grew on him and how he regretted not hiring him in the first place and he wanted someone with his talents working at his firm. And in response, Saul threw bowling balls at Howard's car and sends prostitutes to him while he's having lunch with his colleagues, once again just whittling away at that Howard HHM reputation. And in an effort to just squash the beef altogether, Howard decides to meet up with Kim and explain the whole thing and maybe get Kim to try to talk some sense into Howard and Kim's response is no and I'm actually going to help him destroy you and it begins all in season six and it begins with this grand plan that involves an incredible amount of calculation and precision starting with leaving breadcrumb like hints that Howard may be a drug addict like leaving a bag of white powder in Howard's locker at the country club in front of Cliff Maine whose son just so happens to be an addict then the couple decides to make a duplicate of Howard's car key and take his car while he's in a therapy session to stage another scene in front of Cliff Main, this time with a prostitute. Bitch! Ah! You're twisted, Jesus, shit! What is that? Howard? Cliff, being the good friend that he is and also Howard's co-counsel, decides to confront Howard on what he sees and Howard realizes that this is all Saul's doing. So Howard convinces Jimmy to actually get in the ring with him and have a little boxing match and it is, without a doubt, peak middle-aged men fighting. Like, you would think that he would probably be fighting like this. But in actuality, he's more of like this. So after their fight ends, Howard decides to hire a private investigator to follow Jimmy everywhere, but little does Howard know that that detective is actually a con man hired by Saul himself. The final piece of the puzzle comes together when they stage fake pictures of what looks like the mediator of a meeting with lawyers in the Sandpiper case. And also, these pictures were laced with a special coating that diluted his pupils, making Howard look high out of his fucking mind. And just like that, the leverage that they had with the Sandpiper case is gone, and the reputation of HHM is, I mean, it barely has a leg to stand on at this point. So later that night, Howard visits Kim and Jimmy in their apartment. He confronts the couple over what they did, and he just wanted to know why they decided to tear him down, and what did he do to deserve that, because he starts laying out his problems, like he had debt, depression, a failing marriage, and it really puts things in perspective for us as well as Jim and Kimmy, where they're just like... Oh, I didn't know that. And in the middle of Howard's monologue, at the flick of a candle, things take a turn for the worse when we see Lalo turns up to Jimmy and Kim's apartment and very casually, he decides to pull out a gun, twist on a silencer, and shoot Howard in the head. And I truly felt bad for Howard in this scene because one, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Like, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Like, he just was there when he shouldn't have been. And what makes things worse, and this is just my theory, but I'm pretty sure that Lalo or Jimmy or Kim may come up with the idea to make it look like a staged suicide by maybe just putting Howard's body inside of his car because it wouldn't be the first time in Breaking Bad where they had to make something look real. Gotta make it look real. And all I can say about that is that would be the HHM legacy. 
another HHM CEO who kills himself after a public meltdown. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video, maybe check out some more videos on my channel and even consider subscribing to stay up to date with the content. Until then, um...